This is um, a web class dealing with differential equations. And uh, I'm Doug Cordeville, the lead instructor, and we're going to go over some work in Chapter 1, Section 1. It deals with checking your work, which is something that you're going to have to do on uh, almost every uh, test that you do. And if you get the answer wrong and you haven't checked your work, isn't that lovely? And you haven't checked your work, you're going to see a minus 5 for not checking. Now, why do I do that? Well, that's because it's easier to grade something that's correct than it is to grade something that's wrong. And if you check your work and you have the right answer, then that makes it easier for me to grade it. So we're going to look at problem number two first because we need a right answer as well as a problem. So problem number two says that uh, y prime plus 2y is equal to 0 and that the answer y is equal to um, 3e to the minus 2x. Okay, so we ask ourselves, uh, how do I check that? And we say, well, y is still 3e to the minus 2x and y prime would be uh, minus 6 e to the minus 2x and if we had one of the y prime guys and two of the original equations we want to have zero so we ask ourselves is it zero 2 times 3 is 6, minus 6 is 0, check. So that is, in fact, the right answer to that particular problem. We'll try it another time. Try number 4. Now we do this because if, uh, I'll, I'll do an aside here, um, 2 plus 2, do we know the answer to that? Um, and if we get that answer, have we checked our work? Is there, do, do we not have a good feel for that? In differential equations, we can't have a feeling that the answer is right. Um, and therefore, we have to check it. We haven't solved enough of them to have such a feel. Okay, so I've got uh, y double prime is equal to uh, 9y. And I have two solutions to check. The first solution, y1. I'm checking is uh, e to the 3x and the other solution I'm checking y2 uh, e to the minus 3x so those are the guys that I'm checking and I, I look at the differential equation and I say well that's y double prime minus 9y has to be 0 so I look at the first one and I say, well, y1 e to the 3x, y1 prime 3e to the 3x, y1 double prime 9e to the 3x. And I say, well, I need uh, one of them and I need minus 9 of these and I'm supposed to get zero, I ask myself, is it zero? And I say, well, uh, minus nine plus a nine becomes zero, check. I then look at the other side, y2 is e to the minus three x, y prime of the second part of the solution, minus three e to the minus three x, y double prime uh, 9e to the minus 3x and I want it to be 0 is it? I need one of them and minus 9 9 minus 9 is 0 check so those are in fact solutions to this differential equation uh, we'll try uh, number 8 next no try. Either do or don't do. Y 
double prime plus y is supposed to be 3 cosine 2x. Okay, and uh, we have two solutions. The first solution, y1, uh, cosine x minus sine x. No, cosine x minus cosine 2x. Must be a trifocal problem. Minus cosine 2x. And a second solution, y2, which is uh, sine x minus minus cosine 2x. So those are the two solutions we're checking. We'll look at the first one, y1 prime uh, minus sine uh, minus, that would make it plus, plus 2 sine 2x, uh, y double prime uh, minus cosine uh, plus 4 cosine 2x. And uh, we want, when we get done, we want 3 cosine 2x. Ask ourselves, well, is it? I need one of them. I need one of the original equations. Okay, so I've got cosine minus cosine, they go away. I got 4 cosine 2x minus 1 cosine 2x giving me 3 cosine 2x. So that solution checks. I look on the other side and I say y prime 2, um, the derivative of sine is cosine and uh, plus 2 sine 2x y double prime um, minus sine plus 4 cosine 2x I need one of him I need one of this guy I'm supposed to get 3 cosine 2x, and I have a, a sine and a minus sine, they go away. I've got a 4 cosine and a minus cosine, which becomes a 3 cosine 2x. The solution checks. Okay, we're going to look at number 14. And we're in section one. And uh, number 14 says uh, we have four y double prime is equal to y. And we're checking. And uh, we're checking the solution. Um, hmm. 14. Y is equal to um, e to the rx. Okay, so we look at it and we say, well, that's 4y double prime minus y is supposed to be 0. The derivative of y, uh, r e to the rx, and uh, double prime is going to be r squared e to the rx. And um, what we're looking for is what values of r will make this solution right. So it's, we're not really checking it. We're trying to find what values of r will make it correct. OK, well, I need four of those. And I need minus one of them. 
And when I get done, I'm supposed to have zero. So I have four r squared e to the rx minus e to the rx. And uh, I divide both sides by e to the rx and I have four r squared minus one is zero. So I have r is equal to uh, what, plus or minus a half? Plus or minus one half. The one goes on the other side, I divide by four, I take the square root of both sides, I get plus or minus a half. Okay, so I didn't really check my work in that example. What I did is I found the value of x. Okay, one more time, actually two more times. Now look at number 24. And we have um, x, y prime, minus 3y is equal to x cubed. Isn't that lovely? And the solution we're checking is y of x is equal to x cubed c, which is some constant of integration, plus natural log x. And we're also throwing in something else, and that the y of 1 has to be 17. Okay, so if y of 1 has to be 17, uh, we'll throw that in first, because we're going to use that to solve for our c. So we're going to have uh, 17 is equal to 1 cubed um, c plus the log of 1 is 0. So that sort of implies very strongly that c is 17. Okay, so the solution we're going to check is y of x is equal to 17x cubed plus x cubed log x. Okay, so that's the solution that we're checking. First thing we're going to do is check that the initial condition is correct before we proceed on. So y at 1 is supposed to be 17. And uh, it's 17 plus, that's 0, is 17. So the, the initial condition checks. Now that's sort of phony because we, we figured that out first, right? But that's okay. All right, we'll do it. And what do we need? We need two derivatives. Okay, no, we only need one derivative. That's good. Okay, so we have uh, y is equal to... 17x cubed plus x cubed natural log x. And we want y prime, which is going to be 3 times 17, 51 x squared plus 3x squared natural log x plus x squared. Natural log of x is 1 over x, so I'd make that x squared. Okay, and we want x of that guy, and we want x of that guy, minus 3 of the y's, minus 3. And when we get done, we want to have x cubed. x cubed. Okay, well, we'll put that cube in a slightly different spot. All right, that's good. 
So now we've got um, minus 51 plus 51. The x cubed term goes away because that x makes this x cubed. We have 3x cubed natural log and we have 3x cubed natural log. That term goes away. x times x squared is x cubed and we have checked it. We now know that that is a solution to the problem. Okay, one last problem. This is a problem that's in chapter chapter 8 section 1 and it's a series expansion problem and it says that the right answer well the the, uh, the equation we're solving is y prime is equal to 4y and we've uh, I think we did that once before didn't we no we didn't okay that's fine we did one close to that and uh, the solution in the back of the book says that y is uh, a0. They use c's. I use a's. Um, I don't know why. 4a0x x plus 16 a0 x squared over 2 plus 64 a0 x cubed over 3 factorial plus 256 a0 x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Okay, so now we look at uh, y prime and we get uh, 4 a 0 plus 16 a 0 x plus uh, 64 a 0 x squared over 2 plus 256 that's a 6 a 0 x cubed over 3 factorial. Okay, and we want one of those guys, and we want four of these guys, and uh, we want it to be, actually we want minus four of those guys, right? Because this becomes y prime minus 4y is equal to 0. So uh, we want it to be equal to 0 and we want to show that. Okay, well let's see. We have 4 a zeros and minus 4 a zeros. They go away. We've got minus 16 a 0 x's and plus 16 a 0 x's. They go away. We've got minus 64 a0x squareds over 2 and plus 64 a0x squareds over 2. They go away. We have uh, 256 x0a3s over 3 factorial and plus 256 a0x3s over 2 factorials. That goes away. Now, we have this extra term sitting out here, but it sort of looks like uh, all things being equal, uh, everything's going to come to zero. I just, the higher level terms I didn't write down. I only went that far. So it appears to the casual observer that this solution also checks. Thus ends the presentation.